General Motors announced today that it will introduce two new all-electric vehicles within the next 18 months, the first of at least 20 new EVs that the automaker will launch by 2023. GM also renewed its commitment to hydrogen fuel cell technology, a clean fuel concept that still needs major infrastructure upgrades before it can become a viable alternative. At a press conference in Detroit this morning, GM's Executive Vice President of Global Product Development Mark Roos said that the company was committed to an all-electric future, but cautioned that it wasn't going to happen by flipping a switch. These aren't just words in a war of press releases, Roos added. We are far along in our plan to lead the way to that future world. The new cars that will be introduced will be based on learnings from the Chevy Bolt, GM's well-received mass-market EV. But that doesn't mean that GM's future EVs will look exactly like the Bolt, or even share a similar architecture. Whatever we do, from an electrification standpoint, the next version will be better than the version we have on the road, Roos said. That vision involves everything that we've learned from the Bolt, but the architecture piece of this continues to evolve. That includes lighter vehicles and more flexible battery packs with an evolving number of fuel cells, he added. GM's announcement is part of a broader push by automakers worldwide to transition their production toward all-electric vehicles and away from internal combustion engine cars. Last month, Daimler AG, the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, said it plans to offer electrified versions of all of its cars by 2022. Volvo said it would cease production of gas-only vehicles by 2019. And Volkswagen said it would electrify its entire 300-car lineup by 2030. But compared to its competitors, GM's announcement was slightly more tame, committing to almost two dozen new all-electric vehicles while steering clear of a much grander promise of across-the-board electrification. Because of the different regulatory environments and the different duty cycles that our customers want, there isn't a single year that I can give you on that, Bruce said. GM also unveiled a new concept vehicle, the SURUS, or Silent Utility Rover Universal Superstructure, a fuel cell-powered, four-wheel steer concept vehicle on a heavy-duty truck frame that's driven by two electric motors. Bruce said that GM's hydrogen-powered cars will likely lean toward commercial applications, like delivery trucks or ambulances. This makes more sense than producing retail fuel cell cars, like competitors like Honda, Hyundai, and Kia are doing. Outside of California, the fueling infrastructure for hydrogen cars is practically non-existent. Electrification is all the rage in the auto industry, but the cars themselves represent only a tiny fraction of the entire market. Roos was bullish on GM's ability to turn a profit, however, we will be profitable, he said. Period. Electric car owners will be paid for letting an energy company use their vehicle's battery in a pioneering scheme to increase take-up of the cleaner vehicles and help power grids manage the growth in green energy. Nissan and one of the UK's biggest challenger energy suppliers, OVO, will offer the vehicle to grid service to buyers of the Japanese carmaker's new leaf from next year. After installing a special charger in a customer's home, the supplier will take over the management of the car's battery, with owners able to set a minimum amount of charge they want for driving the next day. OVO will then automatically trade electricity from the battery, topping it up during off-peak periods when power costs about 4p per kilowatt hour, and selling it at peak times for about four times as much. The OVO chief executive, Stephen Fitzpatrick, said the savings would cover the £350-£400 pounds annual cost of charging an electric car. Being able to feed back into the grid will mean that customers will be able to drive for free, he said.
There are about 100,000 plug-in cars in the UK, but National Grid has warned their rapid growth will require the equivalent of a few new nuclear power stations. However, the cause batteries could also help energy networks cope with the increasing but variable wind and solar power on the system by returning power to the grid at times of peak demand and smoothing out inconsistencies in energy supply. The government recently launched a £20 million fund for research into such vehicle-to-grid technology, which has previously been confined to private pilots but will now be open to consumers. Fitzpatrick predicted that while the technology would initially have a relatively modest impact on the take-up of electric vehicles and easing pressure on the grid, it was the thin end of a very important wedge. In future, the flexibility provided by allowing power grid managers to draw on millions of electric cars would be transformational, he said, as well as avoiding the need for costly grid upgrades paid for through energy bills, it could reduce the number of new power stations that need to be built, Fitzpatrick added. Nissan and OVO have also collaborated to sell a 4,800 pounds home battery system to households with solar power, similar to the power wall made by Elon Musk's Tesla. The battery is pitched as a way for buyers to make more money from their solar panels, and OVO will pay owners about 350 pounds a year for allowing it to offer services to the power grid. When the notion of a car air freshener is brought up, a couple of things likely spring to mind. 1. The scent of stale cigarettes, lingering on some Eon's back seat upholstery. 2. A little tree cut out, swaying back and forth, suspended from a rearview mirror. In other words, an item that is a little tacky. Not particularly effective, and certainly doesn't smell much like a real coniferous tree. But does it really have to be that way not anymore? Next month, beloved fragrance brand Diptyke will launch a line of diffusers for your car. If you're a true Diptyke aficionado, we know what you're likely thinking. How exactly is this different from their scented ovals, which could, in theory, be hung from one's centrally located rearview mirror for starters? This new product won't lurch forward when you slam on the brakes. After a scented insert has been loaded into the diffuser's case, a back clip allows the diffuser to be attached to your car's air vent. A vent located on the diffuser itself can then be opened depending on how much fragrance you want emitted. These new diffusers, which will retail for $60, with refills costing $38, come in 7 cents. Yes, don't worry, Bayer's is one of them. So next time you consider purchasing an air freshener for your vehicle, don't let the stale stigma of pine trees haunt you. Maybe you just want your morning commute to smell like your favorite 34 fragrance. F1 intends to have a pair of two-seater experience cars running at every event next year, having instigated a limited program for 2017. The project is overseen by former Minardi boss Paul Stoddart, with former Jordan, Renault and Toyota Technical Director Mike Gascoigne as its technical chief. The uprated two-seater will still be based on the original 1998 Tyrell 026 design and running gear, but will feature a more contemporary body kit after its revision. 
New tubs are also being built, and will feature upgrades including a less obtrusive roll hoop bulkhead, offering the passenger a better view. Paul obviously wants to update these cars to give them a more modern look, and there are some things that we've got to do from a reliability point of view. Gas coin told Autosport, outlining his plan for the car's revamp. We're going to put a modern aero package on it, so a new front wing, bug boards, and rear wing to reflect the current regulations. We're going to make two new chassis, because we want to incorporate changes to improve driver fit and get bigger passengers in, and make them more comfortable and safer. Also we can put dash displays in for the passengers, so they will be able to see where they are on the circuit. Gascoin stressed that the focus is on improving the experience for passengers, we can improve the view for the passenger we can make that seat bulkhead quite a bit smaller, he said. Without compromising on safety, we can improve it in lots of areas. We don't need to take weight out of it or anything. What we're looking at doing is improving the experience for the passenger what he can see, what displays are available to him. Comfort.